Welcome to On the Clock here on Forward Progress. This is the New York Jets draft edition, and you're in for a very special treat today. I will do things a little bit differently as I'm going to be joined by a special guest momentarily. As a reminder, I've done a bunch of these in the series so far. Steelers, Cowboys, Titans, Bengals, Patriots, Saints. They're all in a playlist right here on the Forward Progress channel. You can check it out. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. You'll get notified whenever we put out more videos like this in the future. And if you do enjoy the content, please smash that like button. I alluded to it off the top. Very privileged today to be joined by one of the best NFL bettors on the entire planet, based in Germany, also happens to be a New York Jets super fan. His name is Fabian Sommer, live from Germany. Suma, how's it going? Rob, great intro again. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem at all. I think it makes sense. I've done a lot of these solo so far, which is fine. I did the Cowboys. It's the team that I cheer for. You see the logo behind me. Did a bunch of other teams where I really don't know someone in the betting space that is a fan of those teams or who can comment all that highly on them uh, in terms of their knowledge. But you and the New York Jets, you know as much about them as any person on the planet. Last year, they finished 7-10. and 10. They caught fire in the middle of the year. They had a chance to make the playoffs, and then they got that Mike White injury, the rib injury. They lost their last four games to close out the year. So far in the offseason, they make a few changes. They bring in a couple new wide receivers, Alan Lazard, McCole Hardman. Uh, they get rid of Elijah Moore, who they trade to the Cleveland Browns. I want to pull up their depth chart here, Suma, and I want to break it down with you so that we can take a look at where the Jets might want to address um, positions of need or what are the positions of need for the draft. I will say this is going to be an especially challenging one for us to do because as of now, there's not an Aaron Rodgers trade to the New York Jets. That's in limbo. So we're going to rely on the roster that they have now for the draft. We'll be using both second round picks when we get there, but let's look at their current roster and we'll start with receiver Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, McCall Hardman, Corey Davis, Denzel Mims. It seems to me like they're pretty set at receiver. It, it, unless someone falls into their lap, I just don't see this being a position that they need to address right now, Suma. Yes, especially because um, Robert Sala has said that Corey Davis will be on the team this season, so they don't plan to trade him as of right now. Don't know what could happen in a um, theoretical Aaron Rodgers trade. Uh, Green Bay Packers are also not really rich of uh, wide receivers. But as things stand right now, we are probably looking at Curry Davis and, and Alan Lazard on the outside. Girl Wilson in the slot and then Alan Lazard and Wilson can are basically uh, interchangeable because Alan Lazard is also a very good blocker on, on, the, in, on, on the interior. And Nicole Hartman basically being that... Um, let's call it X Factor, Speed Star, um, end around sweep kind of guy who could be a very nice complementary piece. And the Jets got him for peanuts, basically. Yeah. Now the offensive line is a different story, and depending on which Jets fan you ask, uh, ask you get a very different answer. They bring in Wes Schweitzer from Washington, who will probably take over the center position for Connor McGovern. They had all sorts of injuries at tackle last year. George Fant was injured. Mackay Becton, their left tackle, was injured. What are you looking at with this offensive line going into next year? Can they go into the season with this as their starting five, or are you looking for some improvements? Absolutely not. Um, I would argue that the guard positions are set with Tomlinson and Elijah Barataka. With Schweitzer, he has played some center in recent years for Washington, basically like six, six or seven um, games uh, when Chase Rullier got injured. But other than that, Schweitzer is basically a guard and I would absolutely expect the, the Jets to go after a center at some point in the draft. Um, I think starting in round two, there are a few intriguing options like uh, John Michael Smith and uh, Joe Tipman from Wisconsin. And they also got to address the tackle position, in my opinion, because Dwayne Brown is basically on a one-year deal. Mikael Beckton, we have no clue in which shape he's going to be, whether he's going to be healthy. Um, Max Mitchell is nothing more than a swing tackle. So I think if you're really going to go all in with Aaron Rodgers, you got to go the route that you give him some weapons. And um, we talked about a wide receiver, not really a, a, a major issue at all. So I really expect the Jets, 
if they keep that first pick in the draft, I expect them to go offensive line early. All right. Good, uh, good points made there. Tight end, Conklin, Uzoma, probably could use an upgrade there. Quarterback, I guess it, it, this is also interesting. Like Aaron Rodgers is an, is an old guy. If they acquire Aaron Rodgers, he's at the latter point of his career. I don't think it's without the realm of possibility that the Jets would use a pick on a quarterback. I'm not saying necessarily their first or second round pick, but maybe somebody who drops to them later in the third or fourth round, something like that. I think that's within the realm of possibility. Although we've seen the Packers do that, use a pick on a quarterback before, and that didn't make Aaron Rodgers too happy. So maybe they want to avoid that. But let's take a look at the defense. Um, pretty solid up front. Looking at the defense top to bottom right now, Suma, where do you think are, are the weakest areas and the areas that they need to address? I think they are very thin behind Quinn Williams at defensive tackle. They re-signed Solomon Thomas, but overall, I don't really like the depth behind uh, Quinn Williams. Um, and last season, we saw when Quinn Williams went down, I think it was right before the Jaguars game, the Jets really had issues up front. Um, so they could use a, another defensive tackle there for the rotation. Um, linebacker, I think most Jets, Jets fans will disagree there, but... Quincy Williams, I think he's a little bit overrated, and CJ Mosley is also old and not getting any, any younger. So I would not hate to see the Jets um, getting some depth there at some point in the draft. And I also think that you have to address the the secondary um, at some at some point. Uh, Sauce Gardner, we, we, we don't need to uh, talk about him at all, but um, I think getting a, another outside wide receiver would uh, be solid and um, at safety they got safety, safety looks rough right now going into yeah. the year for them they uh, i mean yeah. i'm trying to think of who they lost in the lot off season they lost sheldon rankins on the defensive line um who was was it lamarcus joiner that was starting at safety for them last year yes yes and and i believe he hasn't been signed up yet he's just a free agent but that yep. looks to me like it could be a pretty rough safety tandem yeah they traded for chuck clark I actually like the trade because it was only a sixth round pick, and I think Chuck Clark would be a very good like second or third safety in the rotation. Um, Ashton Davis had some injuries in the past. Yeah, they gotta do something at safety and um, at some cornerback depth, in my opinion. All right, so we're going to get into the draft itself here, and this is going to be very standard. If you've watched the previous videos here. Uh, as part of this on-the-clock series on forward progress. You know how it's going to go down. The Jets have the 13th overall pick. There's no one there in the 12th spot because the Texans have two picks in the top 12. We're going to keep the same settings that Pro Football Focus uses as their default settings. So we're, the other teams are going to basically draft based off of the public boards rather than the PFF boards. They care less for positional value, and the randomness is going to be pretty low overall. We're doing seven rounds per usual, starting it as slow as we possibly can just so that we can see the early picks. So Carolina is going to be on the clock, Suma, at first overall here. What are your thoughts in general on trading up in the draft? Because I know I have specific thoughts and I've been approaching these mock drafts in a very specific way. If that player that you really want there, like who's your ideal pick for the Jets at 13th overall? And if that player could possibly come off the board at 10 or 11, are you in consideration for trading up to get that player? No, I hate trading up in the draft unless it's for a quarterback. I think that every uh, serious study has shown that in the past that as soon as you trade up for a non-quarterback, it's usually a minus EV proposition because you're always overpaying. So I'm in general not a fan of trading up, rather trading down. For the Jets, I'm looking at guys like Paris Johnson or, or Broderick Jones here. In the, in the 13th spot. And I would not try to trade up because I think the way the board could fall, I think there's a very decent chance for the Jets that one of the four um, offensive tackles will be there. Skoronski might be gone, Paris Johnson might be gone, but one of Donald White or Broder Broderick Jones should be in the range. Okay, we're going to get the draft started here. It's been going pretty consistently some combination of Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud, 1-2. I think we did get an Anthony Richardson, 1 overall, uh, this week when I recorded as well. But let's get the, give this a go. Starting the draft, uh, again, we're running it on slow. 
Anthony Richardson again, number wow. one. They're going high upside. Bryce Young, Arizona, Will Anderson. We might get another quarterback here. Will Levis. Oh. So CJ Stroud dropping in this draft all the way to the Raiders, which would be a steal for them at this point. And they get him at seven. Oh, nice. Very unlikely to happen. I think in real life, JSN off the board at eight. Bears address defense. There's Peter Skoronsky gone to the Eagles. Broderick Jones. Come on, Paris Johnson. Paris Johnson, baby. Okay, so we'll go through it here. Now, PFF ranks Devin Witherspoon the highest of the remaining picks. Quentin Johnson. I'm scrolling down here. Mm -hmm. Paris Johnson is suffers from PFF doesn't love him as much as, as his rear um, the public boards do, but mm -hmm. his PFF grades were insane through college. And he's, his comp is Ryan Ramchick, who's had a solid career with the Saints so far. Takes every box physically you could want at the tackle position. Uh, happy to pick him in this spot if you think it's the best pick. Just giving you the other options in terms of who's available here. But talk mm -hmm. me through what you're doing here in the 13th slot. Okay, so I, I got to say that Devon Witherspoon is very intriguing because he's like the classic man coverage guy. He had like a 60% man coverage rate in college or something that I've read the other day. So he, he would be a, a fantastic um, partner for Sauce Gardner, to be honest. But I think with the way that the offseason is shaping up for the Jets, like going all in with Aaron Rodgers, I think you got to go offense first do everything uh, that you can to really um, get that side of the ball right and then hope for some po positive variance on the, on the defensive side. So um, we can check the, the, the trade offers. Maybe there's something like like the Packers at 15 trading or what, willing to trade up. 22. So 22 is the highest that's willing to trade up for Baltimore. And I think if you do trade that down to 22 there, the likelihood of Weatherspoon being gone is high. I would say that... Yeah almost certainly Paris Johnson's gone at that spot as well. Yes, absolutely. So I would like to lock in Paris Johnson. I think I, I would have strongly considered trading down if it's like two or three spots. But yep. um, in this case, I, I want to secure the um, new left tackle for Aaron Rodgers. Perfect. And by the way, I always point this out. We identified some specific needs. PFF is likely going to grade us based off of the needs that they outline for the Jets, which are tackle and linebacker for the biggest for them. I don't always draft according to the PFF needs, but let's go ahead. We're going to take Paris Johnson here. He has been drafted. Now I'm going to quickly pause and we're going to move this to a turbo setting. We're probably not doing any trading up at any point. So our next pick is 42. Let's get there as quickly as we can. Tons of players coming off the board. So now we're in the 42 and 43 spot. Um, yeah. Now, I will say, having done a bunch of these so far, Tanner McKee's always here because <laughs> his ADP is 71.9, but PFF really likes him. Um, we get a lot of the same players that are here a lot. Felix Anuduke Uzoma, edge rusher from Kansas State, here a lot. I'm going to quickly scroll down here and give you the options that are available. Luke Musgrave is intriguing at tight end. Hmm. Not, I, I mean... They're not weak at tight end, but they can always improve that position. Yes. Antonio Johnson at safety. would be a little bit of a reach. We're picking 42. His ADP is 51.6. And we could also filter by specific positions if we wanted to as well. But we're starting to get into um, territory where it would be a little bit of a reach, I would say, if we're yeah, taking yeah, ADPs that are here. So at the top of the list, we have Diane Henley, Washington State, linebacker position. I'm not sure what to do here, Suma. Need your thoughts. Uh, what are our trade options? Okay, Bengals at 60, so or Chiefs at 63. So for trading back this year, it probably means that we're going to try to accumulate some draft capital for next year, I would say, in the same round, um, yeah. and maybe stockpile another pick, pick on top of it. Yeah, so to trade back 18 spots, I would probably want like a, at least a second round of 2024 and maybe at a late round pick 
um, uh, sorry, like the, let's try the 90, 90 second uh, pick of the Bengals. That, they, uh, they say no a. to that for sure. I mean, we could try, we can just try to, 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 you know, rob them blind with the 131, the very small chance of getting accepted and then see if they take it. Yeah. No. So 163 okay. would give me a 12% chance they would take this. What am I missing here? I thought that giving up 42 for 60 and a future second is not that bad. What am I missing? It's it's not bad. It's 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 just basically the way that it's calibrated is like other teams are also aware of the trade chart and they try not to do like fair value on the trades. Okay. Okay. Right. Like if we do, if we go for this one, I think this is pretty fair value. They still rejected it. So okay. it's. We're, we're in we're in dire straits, I would say, here in the second round because it doesn't seem like the Bengals want to give up uh, too much to move up to this spot, and we don't have the best players on the vo on the board for us. Okay, I would probably go with the um, edge slash defensive tackle whose name I cannot spell, who's the fourth on the list. Uh, I think that guy absolutely killed the combine. And I think yep. he, yeah, I think that he's also capable of, of playing inside when I yep. remember the draft report that I was reading the other day. So he, I would he play, probably... he played basically like his snaps last year, 374 outside tackle, 261 B gap. So it was pretty, pretty decent split. Okay. Let's take him. Eddie Bavori, I guess is his name. Yep. And then try to trade down a few spots with the next pick. Still only the Bengals. Still only, still only the Bengals. This is the uh, first time we've been put in a position here that is um, a little bit of like, ah, uh, we're in no man's land type of thing. Like yeah. Steve Avila is an option, but the, but the Jets really don't need a guard. Yeah. I would probably go with uh, Joe Tipman. He might be... Uh, where is he? There, yep. there. He's probably a reach according to the PFF uh, settings, but I've seen him getting marked uh, in the middle of the th of the second round consistently. So I think we cannot do very wrong here with it with a center. I'm fine with that. I'll go ahead, Joe Tipman, and we move on. Our next pick is 112. So there's a, a ton. That's going to go by here all the way till we get to the fourth round. And now it's basically like who's a value that's dropping to us at this point. We have Travius Hodges Tomlinson, who I believe is a nephew of Ladanian Tom. I, I think he's a nephew of Ladanian Tomlinson. Oh, really? May, may, I, I might be very confused here. I'm going to check him out really quickly. Would yeah, fit for a the nephew bits. of Hall of Fame running back LT. That's the Shades connection. Of Tim Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, PFF loves this guy. His ADP is significantly lower than where we're picking right now. Let's take him. Uh, I want to go with a corner anyway. Yep. All right. Easy. Fell right into our lap, I would say. That's an A-plus pick. I can tell you PFF is rating that one as an A-plus. 143 coming up right now. Okay, so we have edge rushers on the table. We have Ronnie Hickman, safety Ohio State here. Pretty yeah. decent drop. Keandre Coburn, Texas. I'll keep scrolling through. Mm -hmm. Davis Allen is a tight end. Jared Clark, interior defender. More corner Chris help. Wheaton. Yeah. Yep. What are we thinking here? Uh, can you scroll up again? Yep. Start at the top. Uh, I don't hate the safety, and, and I would also not hate more defensive line depth. Um, let's go with the safety. Okay. Ronnie Hickman, Ohio State, who I believe I drafted to the Cincinnati Bengals yesterday in my mock draft. 
Oh yes. They <laughs> lose their two starters and they have Dax Hill from Michigan, uh, who they're going to, yeah. you know, excel. They, they picked them late at the first round last year. So, all right, 207, our final pick here in the sixth round. We're not expecting this person to turn into a pro in the NFL. There are two trade offers. If we want to, you know, potentially stockpile like another seventh for next year, it's possible. Um, or we could just go with whatever we see that we like here. I would not hate another backup quarterback. I mean, yep. Zach Wilson is done, in my opinion. Yeah, he's, and... he's cooked. We, uh, uh, we do have Aiden O'Connell, who P PFF likes a lot relative to his ADP. Malik Cunningham, project quarterback. Outside of that, it would be a reach for anyone else. Yeah, I, I love the name. Sounds, sounds pretty Irish. Aiden <laughs> O'Connell. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going Aiden O'Connell? Let's go Aiden O'Connell. Okay. Aaron Rodgers not going to be too happy with that. <laughs> drafting another QB. We're going to get to the end of the draft here as it simulates through the final 20 picks or so. PFF will give us a grade overall. Now, again, it's going to be based off of their rankings, value, all sorts of things, but we'll walk through the final version here. Okay. So Paris Johnson, they like that pick. Where you're, where they're slacking, slagging you here is Joe Tipman. They're not yeah. a fan. But you know what? To your point, I think the more recent mock drafts, he's been going higher and higher. Uh, we're recording this. I mean, this is the beginning of April right now. So basically, we might see this grade be very different in two weeks based yeah. off of where he's being mocked in other drafts. Overall, how do you think we did here? I think we did well. In hindsight, I think we should have tried to trade down a little bit more aggressively. Possibly, uh, maybe like going down in the in the fourth or fifth round to get a few extra picks. But overall, I think we addressed tackle, we addressed the defensive line, we got a new starting center, and we got a cornerback who might have a a role in some dime packages early on. So I th I think we we did pretty well here. I would agree. Another draft grade, A minus overall. Still in the A's. Have not drafted yet where we did not get an A overall. Let Suma know how you think he did down in the comments below. If you think he did a bad job, tell him. Say, Suma, you stink. <laughs> yes. You're not as good as Rob. You can't be in the front offices of, the, of, <laughs> uh, of these NFL teams. If not, and you agree with a lot of stuff, let him know. And of course, if you did enjoy this, please like the content. Please subscribe to us, Forward Progress, here on YouTube. Ton of draft coverage over the remaining few weeks, including some picks as we get closer to the NFL draft on April 27th. For Rob Pizzola, for Fabian Somer, this has been On the Clock with the New York Jets here on Forward Progress.